Zoe 102 is shown on Paramount Plus right now, and all I can say is this is nostalgia done horribly wrong. Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to the channel and thank you so much for taking your own time out to check out this review of Zoe 102. Directed by Nancy Hauer and starring people such as Jamie Lynn Spears, Sean Flynn, Aaron Sanders, Christopher Massey, Matthew Underwood and Dean Gear. This follows Zoe and the gang getting back together to come together for the wedding of Quinn and Logan. Now just before we go a little bit further into today's review, I would like to say a huge thank you to all my awesome Patreons who helped to really support the channel. If you're interested in joining Patreon and if you're interested in buying some merch or checking out my debut book, there is a link down below in the description box you can click where you can find all that good stuff. Over on Patreon, membership start from only £2 per month, you get access to so much extra content such as early videos, movie reviews, watch parties and so much more. So when this project was announced, now I'm going to be honest, back in the day I did watch Zoe 101 and I remember enjoying it in my teenage years. So when they announced this project, I was like, okay, it's been a very long time. I know they did a tease, I think it was for like the 10th anniversary. I know I'm going into this one, I didn't see any trailers, I just saw the poster and I was like, is this going to be any good or is it going to be like a kind of a cash grab? Is it just going to be kind of like nostalgia bait? And I'm just going to out, flat out say this right now, this is an absolute mess it is nostalgia trying to bait people in but not done in a great way at all this was horrible guys really really was now before i go into those negatives let's just kind of highlight a few minor positives if that firstly the biggest positive i can give this is erin sanders who plays quinn penske She's the best actress in here. She is trying to hold this movie up with the material she's given. And I think this is set like 15 years after the original series around that time. Maybe a little bit longer, a little bit less. And it seems as if she's the only one of the whole gang that's actually learned some acting chops since that time. Because everyone else, we'll, we'll get to. And then the newcomer of Dean Gear, who plays Todd. He's fun. He, he's a lot of fun and he's actually a welcome addition. And again, this newcomer is holding this nostalgia bait up. Yet, yeah, those two people are the only ones that is actually doing something okay here. The movie, it's well shot. Like, the cinematography's nice. And it was nice seeing the original cast kind of come together after all this time. But that is purely it for my positives because I'm going to be honest, this movie left me bored, frustrated, annoyed and the fact that they tried to reel in nostalgia to reel me back into this world and by the end of it I really couldn't give two cares about what happens next. It's just horrible. So for example, if you watch the original series back when, that acting was of the time and that series produced was of that time. And it was memorable for a lot of people who watched it, like myself included, and I actually remember enjoying it. But as I mentioned, it seems as if these people, 15 or so whatever years later, have just not grown up. And don't get me wrong, that can be fun if it's done in a right way, but it's almost as if this is like trying to cater itself towards adults to an extent like that with that original audience now grown up but also feels like it's stuck in like the 2000s kind of time and it's just like we've moved past that a lot since then and we've learned grown up and matured a lot since then and i really wish that this movie took more of a mature take but having more kind of sensible humor in it and like clever humor because as i mentioned Except from Aaron Sanders and Dean Gee, no one does a good job. The dialogue feels like if it's written for like 12 year old humor and like hoping that 12 year olds, 15 year olds, or whatever, are going to really enjoy this movie. It is just written as if these characters just have not learned since Pacific Coast Academy. And I'm just like, I was like, Ugh. like left like really, really frustrated by the end of it. This was meant to be maybe for fans of the original series, like a nice 
get together, a nice reunion, kind of a nice project to maybe see our final goodbyes to these characters and give us kind of like an ending to their story and wrap up of all this time. And by the end of it, you kind of do get that. But as I mentioned, you don't give two cares about what happens. And I think this is an absolutely huge missed opportunity. It, As I said, it felt as if Nickelodeon was stuck back when with the exact same hu humour. And pretty much 99% of the characters haven't learned and they still think that shtick from back then is funny. There's an awful side plot involving Zoe and her job and the acting is bad. I've seen Asylum actors do better than these and you would think that these would be doing better than that but that they're not yeah this guy honestly avoid at all costs even if you're a fan of the original series i mean if you want to waste your time with this you feel free it's on paramount but i strongly wouldn't advise it i'm going to be honest with you so my overall score for zoe 102 is a half a star out of five. Have you seen Zoe 102? Are you going to check it out? Leave any and all comments down below so we can continue discussion down there. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up, press the red subscribe button down below so I can see you again on future videos. And until the next time that I see you, I'll be seeing you later. Mm -hmm.